then as terrifying as it was inexplicable. His wife began to remove her own skin as if it were a suit, remaining simply a flaming ball of fire which shot out of the chimney hole. Recovering from the shock, the man broke down in tears as he saw the happiness of his marriage shattered. Finally, he got to his feet and did the only thing that came to mind at the time. Fighting back his nausea, he scooped up the skin the witch had left behind and tossed it into the fire, where it slowly burned. A few hours later, near dawn, he watched hidden as the ball of fire returned home and started looking for his skin, going around the room. It seemed scared and despaired as time passed and it couldn't find it, to the point of screaming and slamming itself against the walls. Finally, dawn came. The first rays of light peeked over the horizon and entered through the windows of the house. Suddenly, the fire began to lose strength and consume itself, as if something was putting it out, until the point where it finally vanished in a column of smoke with a final piercing scream. And since then, no living person has ever seen the Witch of Coyoacán again. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode. Happy first day of Inktober, besties! It feels so good to be back, and we're starting this year's series off with the story of the Lady in Black. Lady in Black is a tale that originated in Boston, Massachusetts, specifically in Fort Warren, which was used as a training camp and a prison during the Civil War. The ghost is believed to be the spirit of Melanie Lanier, whose husband was a soldier imprisoned at Fort Warren, and Melanie came up with a plan to free him. Disguised as a man, she hoisted her body over the prison walls using a rope, reuniting with her husband. Using a pickaxe, she began tunneling out of the prison underneath the thick stone walls, followed by her husband and several other prisoners. Because the digging was so loud, the guards eventually heard them, and a fight broke out between the guards and the prisoners. During this, a guard tried grabbing a pistol Melanie was carrying on her, accidentally striking her husband during the scuffle. Melanie was arrested for trying to aid her husband in escaping and was sentenced to death by hanging. Still disguised as a man, she requested to change into women's clothing and the guards found a simple black gown to clothe her in her last moments. Her restless spirit is said to roam Fort Warren, mourning the loss of her husband and holding the guilt and frustration of her failed attempt to free him. Screaming Jenny is an American urban legend that originated in West Virginia. Jenny lived in an old storage shed along the railroad tracks. She did not have much money to her name, but always kept her spirits alive and went out of her way to help others in need. On a cold autumn evening, she was huddled over a fire to keep warm. A single spark flew from the flames, lighting her skirt on fire. She did not notice at first until the flames burnt through her clothes and began scorching her skin. Immediately, Jenny ran out of her shed, screaming for help as the flames grew larger. She knew the train station was not too far away and ran towards it in hope that someone would be able to help her. Overwhelmed with pain and her body engulfed in flames, Jenny ran onto the tracks and was struck by a passing train. It is said that on the anniversary of Jenny's death, she can be seen standing on the same tracks, covered in flames, and screaming for help. Many engineers claim they have come face to face with the burning ghost of screaming Jenny, still pleading for someone to save her. Grace Sherwood, aka the Witch of Pungo, was the last woman in Virginia to be convicted of witchcraft. Grace was a healer and a midwife, often using natural remedies to after claiming she transformed herself into a cat, damaged the crops, and even caused miscarriages. After several charges, the court ordered that Grace's guilt or innocence should be determined by docking her in water. Water was considered to be pure, so if Grace sunk to the bottom, the water was accepting her, but if she were to float, she would be considered a witch because the water is supposedly rejecting her body. On July 10, 1706, Grace was taken down to Witch Duck Bay in Virginia Beach. Her hands were tied to her feet and the sheriff tied a 13-pound Bible to her neck. After being thrown into the water, Grace sunk a little bit but was able to untie herself, returning to the surface. She was put in jail for eight years and lived to be 80 years old after her release. In 2006, 300 years after her trial by water, Grace was given an informal pardon. There is a statue in Virginia Beach dedicated to her today.
Olive Thomas was an American silent film actress, art model, and photo model. She began her career as an illustrator's model in 1914 and eventually became a Ziegfeld Folly showgirl, which was a series of Broadway productions in New York City from 1907 to 1931. She was also considered to be the original flapper girl since she was in a 1920 film that coined the phrase. In September of 1920, while vacationing in Paris, Olive and her husband Jack Pickford returned to their hotel suite after a long night of partying and entertainment. Both intoxicated and tired, Olive Thomas ended up ingesting a mercury dichloride solution which had been prescribed to her husband to topically treat his syphilis. Whether this was accidental or intentional became a matter of debate. Unfortunately, Olive Thomas ended up passing away in the hospital five days later at the age of 25. Since then, Olive has been said to haunt the New Amsterdam Theater in New York City where she performed often. People who have seen her ghost say she struts around in a green beaded costume that she previously wore on stage while clutching a blue bottle. Stagehands say if you do see her, it is best to say goodnight Olive as to not offend the theater's longtime resident. The spirit of Anna Cito is said to haunt the Spandau Citadel in Berlin, Germany. The story involves the Prince Elector Joachim II, who had a great love for hunting and was married to a woman named Hedwig from Poland. In 1549, Hedwig was involved in a tragic accident that severely injured her abdomen and made it extremely difficult for her to walk. Joachim took Anna Cito as his mistress, allowing her to live in a hunting lodge he had built west of Berlin. He eventually grew ill and passed away, and on his deathbed he asked his son, Johann, to look after the woman he loved the most, meaning Anna. Johann despised Anna and went against his father's wishes. He had Anna arrested and taken to the Citadel, where she was imprisoned until her death in 1575. Days before Johann passed away in 1598, he claimed he saw Anna's spirit appear before him as a woman in white. In 1709, the palace was being reconstructed, and the skeleton assumed to be Anna Cito's was found and given a proper burial. Some stories claim, however, that Johann had Anna sealed within the walls of the hunting lodge while she was still alive. This means the skeleton that was found may not have been hers, and her restless spirit could still be haunting the fortress's halls. The spirit of the Green Lady is said to haunt the halls of Scotland's Fivey Castle. Her name was Dame Lilias Drummond, and she was married to Alexander Seaton. Alexander was having an affair with another woman, possibly due to the fact that Lilias could not bear him a son. One day, she suddenly disappeared, and no one was sure of what happened to her. Many people speculated that her husband poisoned her or locked her up somewhere, but for whatever reason, she was never seen again. Lord Drummond eventually married his mistress and spent their wedding night in one of the highest towers of the castle. The wife said she could hear a mournful cry from outside her window, and she even heard scratching, but when Alexander looked, nothing was found. The next morning, Alexander opened the window and saw D. Lilius Drummond carved into the window sill from the outside. Being that the window was so high and the words were etched in upside down, many believed that the spirit of Lilius Drummond was there that night. Since then, many people claimed to see her ghost around Phoebe Castle, crying over the betrayal of her husband and leaving behind a scent of rose petals. The etching of her name can be seen on the window sill to this day. In Slavic folklore, the Liho is a creature that embodies evil and misfortune. Depictions of the Liho vary, but no matter what, their most defining feature is that they only ever have one eye. They've been depicted as a thin, elderly woman dressed all in black, or they even appear as a male goblin-like creature that dwells in the forest. They are considered to be a servant of death, and it is best to not try and trick them, for they will always find a way to win. If you encounter the Liho, you are almost always doomed to lose. In many tales, the Liho will attach itself to a person's neck, making it impossible for the victim to break free. In desperation, the person will jump into a river in an attempt to drown the creature. Unfortunately, this usually results in the victim losing the battle and the Liho swimming away to find its next victim. In Slavic mythology, Baba Smantarna is an evil spirit that wanders the graveyards at night, bringing misfortune to those she meets. She digs up graves with her long, sharp claws, scattering the bones across the cemetery. She takes great pride in frightening the graveyard's nightly visitors. Hi guys, welcome to my official... In Slavic mythology, Baba Smantarna is an evil spirit that wanders the graveyards at night, bringing misfortune to those she meets. She digs up graves with her long, sharp claws, scattering the bones across the cemetery. She takes great pride in frightening the graveyard's nightly visitors, capturing them and pulling them down into their own grave and burying them alive. She particularly enjoys preying on widowed men, reveling in their grief and loneliness. When she sees them wandering the graveyard, she takes on the appearance of their loved one and follows them home. 
As Babas Mantarna taunts them and warns them of the grim consequences to come if they replace her, the widowed man begins to question his own reality. Futakuchi Ona, aka the Two-Mouthed Woman, is a type of yokai in Japanese folklore that is cursed with having two mouths. She has a normal mouth at the front and another on the back of her head hidden behind her thick, lustrous hair. The woman's skull splits in two, revealing lips, teeth, and a tongue. In most stories, the woman appears to never eat, but the mouth in the back of her head is ravenous and consumes large amounts of food. There are a few different stories depicting how she got her second mouth. One story tells of a man who was out in the garden chopping wood for a fire when he accidentally swung his axe and embedded it into the back of his wife's head. Oopsies! The woman survived this, but the open wound never healed and instead formed into a grotesque mouth. The woman was in a lot of pain and the only way to stop it was to feed her deformed mouth. It demanded more and more food and eventually even began to talk, mumbling spiteful and threatening things to the woman. A Sundel Bolong is a vengeful spirit in Indonesian mythology. They are often described as a woman with extremely long black hair wearing a long white dress. The legend tells of a beautiful woman who was forced into sex work and was later found dead with a large hole in her back. Stories vary on what her cause of death actually was, but one popular story claims that she was pregnant and died during childbirth due to a strange phenomenon that caused the baby to come out of her back. She was treated horribly by men during her life, so her victims consist mostly of men walking alone at night. She approaches them with ease with her exposed spine concealed by her long flowing hair. If the man rejects her advances, she mutilates them. Her other victims are children, especially newborns, which she takes in order to replace her lost child. The story of Mercy Brown takes place in Rhode Island during the late 1800s. Several members of the Brown family suffered from tuberculosis infections, causing the mother and sister to pass away in 1891 and Mercy Brown to pass in 1892. One of the younger sons, Edwin, was still alive, suffering with the disease. Friends and neighbors began to speculate that one of the dead family members was a vampire and was the reason behind young Edwin's condition. The father, George Brown, was persuaded to give permission to dig up the bodies of his family members in order to silence the rumors. The bodies of Mercy Brown's mother and sister had the expected level of decomposition, but Mercy's body had almost none at all, as if she was frozen in time. Reports even say that she still had blood in her heart. Because of this, local villagers suspected that Mercy Brown was undead and was the reason Edwin was ill. Mercy's heart and liver were burned and the ashes were mixed with water to create a tonic to give to Edwin in an effort to heal him. He died two months later and what remained of Mercy's body was buried again in the cemetery. In Celtic and Norse mythology, the Selkie is a marine creature that is half seal and half human. Unlike the typical mermaid, they are seals in the water, but on land, they take on a human form. They are said to be irresistible to ordinary humans who quickly fall in love with the Selkies. Legend says that in order to come ashore, Selkies must shed their skin or tail. If a human happened to find a selkie skin, they would hide it away, preventing the selkie from returning to the sea. The stories often end in the selkie being coerced into a relationship with a human who found her seal skin and hid it away. In Celtic folklore, Nicnevin is known as the Queen of Fairies. Her name is derived from a Scottish Gaelic surname meaning Daughter of the Little Saint. She is the crone goddess of Samhain, representing the onset of winter, and she governs the realms of magic and witchcraft. Samhain marks the end of the harvest season and is celebrated on October 31st. It is said that on this day, the veil between worlds grows thin and the living can communicate with those who have passed. McNevin is depicted as the mother witch of sorcery. Themes of protection, ghosts, divination, peace, and winter are often associated with her. Because of her association with Samhain, she is often seen with pumpkins and gourds, which are traditionally carved for protection and to illuminate the path for a spirit's transition from one world to the next. She is a goddess that can move easily between worlds and is said to fly through the air accompanied by flocks of honking geese. The Nukin is a humanoid shape-shifting water spirit popular in Scandinavian and German folklore. The tale changes from country to country, but the story is always born of the hostility and danger dwelling beneath the surface of the darkest depths of the water. 
The Nukyan are said to be masters of the violin, playing and chanting songs in order to lure their victims to their deaths by drowning. They are considered to be a bad omen for drowning accidents, as they can be found screaming at certain parts of a lake or river to warn a person of their fate. Carrying a piece of steel or throwing it into the water is said to provide protection from the Nukyan. In other stories, this spirit appears as a beautiful white horse. Should anyone be able to mount this horse, they will be unable to get off. The horse will dive deep into the water, thus drowning their victim. In Japanese folklore, Nukakubi is a type of yokai whose head can completely detach from her body. She appears as a beautiful woman during the day, but at night, while her body is asleep, her head comes off and floats about. During this state, she has a strong thirst for blood and relentlessly attacks her victims, sucking their blood like a vampire. When she returns to consciousness, she has no memory of what she did, as if her head became a separate entity. Being a Nukakubi was considered a curse for committing a great sin. One story tells of a woman afflicted with the curse whose head flew about the city at night, chasing young men through the streets all the way to their houses. Locked out, her head would scratch and bite their doors and gates, leaving gashes in the wood. When the girl discovered she had the curse, she was so ashamed, driven mad with the fact that she would live forever as a monster. There is a similar creature known as the Rokurokubi. Instead of her head separating from her body, the Rokurokubi has the ability to stretch out her neck. In Mexican folklore, the legend of La Lechusa tells of a shape-shifting witch who transforms herself into a monstrous owl. She sold her soul to the devil in exchange for magical powers. Often, she is described to be 7 feet tall with a 15-foot wingspan with the body of an owl and the face of a woman. She stays perched on trees or flies through the sky after nightfall, swooping down and carrying away whoever crosses her path.